Okay, I'm very happy and very excited about today. Uh, I want to start by thanking you, Aza, for your time and mm -hmm. for being generous to be part of, of this. Um, I'm looking forward to a lot, uh, a lot, a lot to ask you and a lot to discuss with you because um, I've always been a fan of, of your methodology in, in work as a, as a designer. Um, and the way you treat the letters and how you take, like right away from looking at your work, I, I always sense that you really pay this respect to the culture and uh, the feeling of the Arabic letter itself. This is something I, I've always felt looking at your work, even before getting to talk to you or, or get to know you personally, but um, this, this is an impression I've always had from your work. Um, and your work when it came to specifically the topic of matchmaking, let's say, uh, is, is, is another thing that, that really always got my attention ever since you had the series called Matchmaking Disasters. <laughs> actually you you reminded me of this i had completely yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I i have it all list like i think i saved yeah. it somewhere I, I, yeah. I have i have millions of examples that i stopped because i lost complete i lost hope <laughs> so i'm really excited for your for your presentation today and mm -hmm. i'm sure we will have a lot to discuss after so please yeah, like okay. uh Thank yeah, you. thank you so much for inviting me, first of all. And I think it's great what you're doing, like having talks, but in different topics around Arabic lettering or type design, even branding. So I think th these are really important, especially that they're online. So many people can actually join uh, around the world. <clears throat> so first of all, today's, I mean, the topic of today is matching Arabic and Latin scripts. So what I will do first, I will show you a bit my methodology uh, that I actually teach in workshops. And it's the same methodology that I use for my own work whenever I have a project of matchmaking. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll uh, yeah, I'll walk you through the, the process uh, uh, from like, it's a step-by-step -step process. Usually students um, in the workshops, they're very, they come really scared like because uh, most of the workshops uh, that I do, it's with the students that actually don't even speak Arabic. So for them, it's very uh, difficult and it's a very difficult topic, but you will see at the end that actually it's, it's not that bad, even if you don't know the script. So, um, so the first thing that I teach uh, the students is the, 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 the calligraphic, the Arabic calligraphic styles. I think this is a very, very important um, uh, step. And it's the first step because it's uh, very important for them to know which style is used in which context uh, in, to, in today's, like, uh, in to, like nowadays. Um, and this will help them a lot in choosing the style for, for their logo. So first of all, I, I just introduced them to the different calligraphic styles. I don't show all this. I don't like talk about all the styles because there are so, so many styles. Every time I read a book, I discover a new style. So I just teach them the, 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 what I believe are the most uh, used ones. Um, so I tell them a bit of, about the history of the styles, uh, when they are, when they were, when they have appeared uh, throughout history, but also where, uh, where they were used. So I, I, I tell them where they were used back in the days and also where they are used uh, today, because sometimes the evolution of the script uh, really differs uh, from centuries to others. So I, I, I just talk about early Kufic with them, Nas. Nastaliq, Diwani, and, and uh, Roka. And then I show them uh, actually just uh, visually what, what it looks like, uh, just as a visual uh, uh, reference for them. Um, so people who, who actually, participants who are here now, maybe if they know Arabic, most probably they are familiar uh, with these styles. I'm not sure. I'm sorry to, to cut you. I'm not sure if you're doing like a full screen somewhere else and we are unable to see, but so we can still only see the the first slide with oh. the sidebar on the Adobe Premiere. Oh, it says sharing is paused. Okay, stop share. Okay, now we can see us. Yes. Okay, if I, if I change slides, you see? 
Yes, yes. Okay, cool. Okay, so I show them. So these are the styles. These are this is uh, early Kufic, which is the oldest style in Arabic calligraphy. Nas, uh, Diwani, uh, and Nasalik. I show them really very calligraphic uh, references. Really, I mean, real references, not typefaces. At the beginning, this is just the beginning, just so that they are familiar a bit with the uh, visual of each uh, style. And this is Roka. And then I show them um, kind of um, a table with the, where, the date for, of each style and also if it's extinct. For example, Kufi, uh, they kind of stopped using it around the 13th century. Uh, I also show them, uh, for example, the, uh, I, uh, I show where it was used back in the days and back when it was like at its peak and where it's still seen today. And so I, I for example, in early Kufi, I tell them nowadays you wouldn't really uh, see it in anywhere in books. It's really kind of an extinct, extinct uh, uh, style unless it's uh, really for ar architecture or art. And there are many styles also now nowadays where uh, the, the, the use back in the days, uh, the, the old use is really very, very different from the, the co contemporary use. And I also uh, sometimes um, explain to them a bit, it depends really on the, the level of uh, the students. If they are familiar with Arabic, I would go a bit further in the styles and teach them, teach them a bit about the, the, diff, the what I call them like uh, maybe uh, styles that you could match together in Arabic, such as, for example, uh, Nas uh, matched with Tholot. So, so Tholot is actually the, the kind of, uh, if you want, it's the optical size of Nas. So you would use it uh, as a display for Nas. Uh, same thing, the uh, uh, Raihan is the, Muhaqq um, uh, is the bigger kind of uh, version of, Muhaqq is the bigger version of Raihan and Tawqiya is the uh, bigger version of Rika. So this is a bit more uh, really, very specific and I usually when it's really beginners I wouldn't go into this because it's very very uh, uh, like it's a bit on an, on a higher level so the most important thing for me is actually to show uh, to show them these um, uh, five scripts uh, Kofi, Maghribi, Diwani, Nasalik, Roka uh, and Nas of course which is here uh, here but uh, I wouldn't go into the, the very details when uh, depending on the, on the level. Um, so what, what this uh, brings, I hope, to students is that they really re realize that each script, each style in Arabic, in the Arabic script, is used uh, even nowadays for a very specific, in a very specific context. So for example, I always give this example because it's something they can really maybe relate to, especially if they know more the Latin script. I always say, okay, for example, Diwani is nowadays, uh, like if you want to have a wedding, <laughs> make a wedding, design a wedding invitation, it's always in Diwani. So it's kind of the elegant script. It's like the, the equivalent of a, uh, like a brush script in, uh, in Latin, you know? Uh, so it's uh, this is something they can actually uh, uh, relate to. Uh, so I give examples, like I give, I try to give parallels between uh, Latin and uh, Arabic scripts. And then the next step is to show them examples of like really deep, uh, like very basic typefaces, uh, so that they can see uh, how they are, um, how they are like how type designers actually, um, uh, how do you say, uh, interpreted the, the calligraphy, the NAS, for example, in this case, Adobe Arabic is based on NAS, how type designers uh, uh, interpreted uh, NAS calligraphy into a, a typeface. And so here, I just want to show them the difference in proportions that in, usually in type design, the proportions are much, uh, uh, like a uh, shire because we have uh, um, uh, vertical, for example, restrictions uh, in metrics, et cetera, et cetera. And here they usually, they are very, very surprised. Like they, they, they don't see at all the, the, the link between the typeface and the calligraphy sheet. And this is a, a very uh, difficult for them to see the, you know, the link uh, because the proportions are quite different. Although for, for me, for even for an Arab uh, reader, the structure is quite the same, 
but for them it's very difficult uh, to see. So we, I try to show them more why the, the structure is the same, uh, although like the, the so the skeleton is the same, but like everything around it is, is quite different. So I show them many um, examples of NAS typefaces. Uh, I show them Nastalik typefaces. There aren't many, <laughs> not good ones. I show them really bad Diwani because there aren't good ones. Uh, just so they, they see how what look, looks like. So I explained a bit the, 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 the diagonal baseline that not everything in Arabic is on a horizontal baseline. Uh, really bad examples of Rokaha. And then I start showing them. Uh, I like this part actually because it's a bit historical. Uh, I try to research a bit how things uh, used to happen uh, back in the 50s, 60s, 70s when you know graphic design didn't actually exist. So how did um, brands around the, the world who wanted to, to have, a, let's say, an ad in a magazine in the Arab world, how did they interpret uh, uh, the, the logo uh, matchmaking? So actually, I'm sorry, I don't have the credits for these pictures because I completely, I, I, have, I, I tried to look them on the web again, I couldn't find any credits, but it's, um, it's from someone. <laughs> on my, most of them on uh, on uh, I mean different different sources, but I don't have the actual source. And so, for example, here it's very important. Uh, I show these for a very very specific reason, is to show that before graphic design existed, what what uh, uh, brands would do is that actually they would have the logo, let's say in uh, in uh, in Latin. So for example, in this case, Kodak, this is the Kodak logo of the 50s, okay? So nowadays it, it has changed, but th this used to be the Kodak logo of 50s. And here you can see the, the, um, the Arabic logo in, in Nasr, very, very traditional Nasr. And so what I try to show them is that actually back in the days, most probably what brands would do is that they would go to a calligrapher and commission this calligrapher to do the, the actual uh, equivalent i don't know what the brief would have been but they would say just do just write us kodak basically in arabic and here it's i think i mean back in the days you know and still now calligraphy is very very traditionalist uh, calligraphers are really afraid of changing uh, anything in calligraphy even the weight would would always be you know the same in calligraphy uh, depending on the on the on the reed pen so here, they, I think the calligrapher would try to, to do it, but with maybe a little bit of effort here, uh, they, they uh, chose a, a Nasr, uh, which is, I think, a very uh, good choice of structure, of course. But uh, yeah, with the, like, I, I guess they could have done a bit more effort, but could, I mean, I say they could have done, but you have to think that back in the 50s, this, this concept of matchmaking did not exist. People couldn't care less about matching logos because I think branding wasn't that big of a deal. Like we wouldn't think that, oh my God, these, these logos don't look uh, um, alike and therefore we're not gonna um, recognize the brand. And here in PIFF, uh, it's actually also a very nice example. Like the, the, the matching of it is in Roca, which is I think a very good choice also because the, the Latin is very informal uh, and Roca is the most informal style in Arabic. So I think as a structure, Roca is perfect for this, but same thing, like there's no effort of matching the weight, uh, even no, uh, no effort of matching the size. Uh, so here, my always my like my main point in showing this, as I said, is to uh, to say that the positive thing about this is that the structure is really Arabic, is is, is inspired from a specific style. Uh, but uh, the 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 negative thing is that uh, there's no effort in matching weight, uh, size, uh, and features. Um, I show many examples like the like these uh, uh, some good and some really uh, good in the sense of that the, the 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 choice of the style is correct, but the matching is uh, actually not correct. Uh, these are also nice uh, examples. For example, here Parker is a quite uh, uh, like a sans serif and in capital letters. And they chose to do it in Diwani, which is a, a kind of a weird choice of matching with a, a sans serif uh, and uh, capital letters. But I think here um, 
what really I think inspired the calligrapher is if you see here the swashes, for example, of the pen and the way the, the it does like elegant curves, maybe this is why uh, Diwani was, was chosen in this case. So sometimes you don't know what the, the brief was. So we have to really be open-minded about this and think that uh, uh, like three or four decades, more, more than four, what am I talking about? Um, six dec decades ago, uh, things were really uh, different in branding. Here, uh, actually also, this is a nice, not really good example, but it's interesting. Uh, the middle, for example, here, it's in a scripty uh, a kind of lettering um, in Latin. And here it's in a completely uh, uh, traditional nostalgic and here, for example, maybe the, 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 the inspiration was the actual uh, angle uh, because the, the Latin is, uh, is uh, quite slanted. Uh, they thought maybe we can recreate this effect uh, with the nostalgic, although um, yeah, the, the, it doesn't really match the, the style, I would say. Uh, this is a very classical, and I think it's still the, the actual logo of, um, of um, Coca-Cola until today. So Coca-Cola is uh, is in full of uh, style, uh, while uh, you know the the Latin is super scripty, uh, uh, much more fun I would say than full of. Uh, it's still the the logo. I think uh, they don't don't want to change it maybe because it's very very famous now. But uh, yeah, I mean the, nowadays if I have to give feedback for this, I would say maybe I mean it's it's not the first choice I would go to, but. Uh, uh, at least I you would you can at least um, I'm trying to take this out yeah at least you can uh, you know uh, do some effort of uh, contrast uh, and maybe um, uh, try to 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 recreate a bit the the the, uh, the cool effect of the the Latin which is very in Arabic we don't have this feeling at all it's very very uh, se serious you know sort of is like super traditional. Yeah. Um, uh, this is actually also a nice example. So in Arabic, also in uh, matching, uh, some very very often the the word, the even the name in Latin is, uh, in Arabic would be dif uh, difficult to transliterate. So here, for example, the brand is called Gibbs or, or Gibbs. I don't know. Uh, maybe jibs. So it's a capital G with I B B S inside. And so in Arabic, you cannot do that. It would be really, really difficult to, to because Arabic connects. So you cannot put a regime and then ibs inside. It would look really weird. So here, I think a nice uh, way of uh, a nice solution that they did was to, to um, and so yeah, actually the, the brand is called jibs SR here. You can see the cap, uh, it's jibs here oh. and, and SR. Uh, I don't know what that stands for, but SR. So here, what they did in Arabic, they called it Jibs uh, Sar. Uh, so SR became Sar, and the Sar, the, the weight of the Sar is actually uh, uh, matches the weight of the G, G capital G. And then they, they wrote uh, Jibs in, uh, in the same weight as Ibs. So <laughs> this is also kind of, uh, yeah, like solutions they would find back in the days. Uh, other examples, I'm not going to uh, stay too long with these examples. Um, yeah, so you can see some some are really very, very traditional and others like you can feel that, especially in the 70s, they, they really, I think that this, uh, this idea of matching becomes a bit more uh, uh, like uh, in the heads of uh, calligraphers and maybe uh, at, at uh, this decade there were some calligraphers turning into designers because um, like uh, in the 80s computers started to, to appear so they were uh, trying to maybe move a bit and change maybe careers because they would do this link uh, with, with uh, calligra between calligraphy and design. Yeah and, and, and without cutting the flow of, of your presentation I think it's also very political like the like the seventies is this start of the open market era in Egypt and in the Middle East in general, post war and the the whole thinking of having like an open market and we're now open to the whole like American market import and export movement more. So it's like more of the start of this like towards globalization. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's the beginning. Yeah, yeah. 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 
and more and more brands would like uh, there was much more demand for like uh, writing this uh, brand's name in Arabic or in another script because they were opening uh, up everywhere around the world. But the the the, the difference is that uh, also uh, the, it was really the beginning of branding and the beginning of branding was a huge huge uh, like uh, it made a huge difference in, in logo and in logo matchmaking because a brand meant something consistent. And so yeah. back in, in the 50s, 60s, this, yeah, this concept did not exist. <laughs> and this is actually an, an interesting example here, uh, mobile oil. So it, it used to be called mobile oil. And then uh, this was the logo in Nastalik style. And then when they changed the name, I don't know what here they changed uh, to mobile. It was still the same company. They kept the same, uh, although the, it changed from serif to sans serif in Latin. The Arabic actually kept its uh, original uh, nastalik. Uh, uh, they just uh, dropped the oil, uh, and so this is also interesting. Maybe they did it did not want to make an effort, or maybe the the brand was so famous in Arabic this way that they didn't want to change the logo. And so I sh then this is also yeah this is the the uh, what was it called the, the crimes <laughs> these are the crimes of today. <laughs> I show them, I show students also logo yeah, crimes from what, today. What to do. Yeah, this is my favorite, absolute favorite, Dior. <laughs> it's, a, it's a real thing. Uh, yeah, and this is <clears throat> an absolute crime. Like they just cut the, the capital D and like, yeah, you can see the proportions are huge. They just add serifs. Of, I, don't, I don't even want to talk about this. It's so bad. Yeah, yeah. And then... Yeah, this is also really bad. I mean, yeah, this is so Carluccio's uh, in Latin is like a kind of in a script style, uh, slanted. And here they, they want to do the same thing. Uh, but like, first of all, the contrast is wrong. So it's very important. I teach my students. One of the only thing maybe I want them to learn in the workshop is that in Arabic, the contrast is reversed compared to Latin. And so therefore all, the baseline should be the thickest, uh, the thicker than the vertical. And here it's, it's I mean, Regardless of all the other mistakes in the logo, this is like one of the biggest mistakes. Uh, the, the contrast is not uh, correct in Arabic here. Yeah, this is very common in the Arab world, especially in the Emirates, like to, to have serifs on the Arabic uh, from both sides, like the Latin. This is really, really bad. <laughs> yeah, this is also like a disaster. Like here, it's just that the, 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 the structure of the Arabic is completely wrong. Like, I don't know what they did. They just uh, took structure from the Latin. And so this is completely a no-no. Like uh, the, the structure of the Arabic should uh, always come from the base, which is the callig uh, any calligraphic style if you want. This is specific. This specific example actually is one of the things that, uh, that I, would, I, I have a lot of questions about. With, and it's something I really want to understand. I understand that maybe the extreme level of the 50s where, where Arabic was standing completely away from the features of the Latin, no efforts of matchmaking, that definitely did not work well yeah, and, would, yeah. and would not work in this today world. But yeah. at the same time, there's this thing that started happening in the early 2000s. Yeah, this and is the, I would say this is the other extreme. The, exactly that's the other yeah. extreme which is like yeah let's use the latin letters and recreate the arabic letters Definitely. from and do this like kind of frankenstein components and make a... yeah i mean there are many it was celebrated uh, at a certain point this is yeah awful. yeah i mean it it was and this is i think what really ruined arabic typography in the last uh, i think uh, maybe of 90s I, I think things started to to change in the last in the past uh, seven to eight years where people started realizing not realizing yeah. but people were more vocal about saying how how not just how bad it is but why it's bad and this is the the most important thing it's not bad because we are copying we this is not the the idea the idea is bad it's bad because we are not preserving the arabic identity of the letters i mean i i tell students it's okay to sometimes it's okay to copy a feature so sometimes when you copy a feature 
And it turns out that it's the same structure as uh, sometimes the Arabic, but if you turn it or if it comes from the structure of the pen, it's the same thing. I tell them you can copy it. It's not, a, it's okay, but not copying a structure. Copying a structure is really, really wrong, but copying a feature is okay. So we will talk about what's the difference between structure and features, because I think some people don't really understand uh, what maybe I mean by copying a feature. So for example, here, a feature in, in this, uh, in this uh, let's go to Banana Republic. Here, a serif here, this serif is, is completely uh, a co uh, copied from the Latin serif. I'm not saying that, and I mean, here it's wrong, but it doesn't mean that there are no serifs in Arabic. Uh, so you, what you do, you, what you need to do is always go back to writing in words. I, I really prefer, I really like this methodology of writing in words. Uh, this, describing the Latin. So if you describe the Latin as uh, uh, capital letters, and then you say with serifs, and then you say normal proportions, for example, you say contrast, and then you translate these words into how you would do it in Arabic, you, you would need to do an Arabic that is kind of serif, with serif, high contrast. I mean, capital letters, we don't so have you're, Arabic. So you're building the context of the design Yeah, process it doesn't, so not... if you say, yeah, if you say serif in Latin, it doesn't mean in Arabic, copy the serifs. It means find if there are serifs in Arabic. So you go and research. If you don't know, it's okay. It's, I mean, I don't know everything in yeah. Arabic calligraphy either. So I would go and research serif Arabic. And then you can, you see that there are serifs in Arabic in some, in some styles but they are on certain letters. You cannot put them just everywhere. And also they are not like this. They are not centered on both sides. They come from an in-stroke usually. So, so you have to interpret this. With the rationale. How, yeah. yeah, but always going back in, into the, the identity of the script, into history, especially into history. And this you need to research and then interpret it. And then maybe you would think you would, if you feel that actually the serifs don't uh, really go very well, or, and then you can drop it. You know, it's it's uh, you need to, to to test things. It's not you're not gonna have the solution immediately. But I'm just saying that you need to um, check sometimes if this script has this feature. If this script doesn't have the feature, you cannot just like uh, push it, push it. Uh, yeah, and I think it's also about setting free from this identification or, or, or like explanation of what is matchmaking exactly like mm. I think for at, at a certain point there was like a collective I don't know there, there was like a I can't even say a taste there was like a common practice of doing the nib, nib and tuck cut, cut and paste thing yeah, yeah, that yeah. made the like some designers uh, believe that matchmaking is about having the same exact like visual features. Vis just both. visual, not in, in well. This is not necessarily the case, though. actually. Like, like it's it's more about the the feeling of it at, in in general. Like, if, if the surf is not gonna work, you don't need to put it actually, and you see exactly. Yeah, yeah, and I see this also a lot in. And many other uh, things, especially for example, this is also is one of the biggest problems. But also for me in Arabic, one of, one of the like something I see very commonly is that people like to always um, align align things uh, yeah. with the Latin, and and usually Arabic is really much much uh, shorter than English, and then uh, yeah, than English I would say. Yeah, so I, and then yeah, I'll show actually now an example this one oh, yeah. so here you can see the latin is really wide letters uh and very geometric <laughs> than here i mean first of all super super calligraphic not even uh, they didn't even do the effort of uh, contrast and also yeah. of like uh, having it a bit uh straight and here in this case the the, the feeling is completely different yeah. here uh, the the description of the letters would be wide the latin would be wide low contrast uh, uh, capital and space, like uh, the spacing is quite generous. And here, of course, okay, the, this is quite generous spacing, but here the, uh, the ra and the wow should have been much, much wider. This is like a good opportunity for you to widen the, the ra and the wow, you know? And like you, you, the, the feeling of this extension is much, 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 much bigger than the feeling of this. Uh, yeah, there would have uh, been a million uh, things with, to do other than the casino. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
And so people, yeah, they compromise aesthetics just because they want to match things uh, at any price, you know, and this is really... Uh, yeah, I think, and uh, Harant is saying something in the chat, I think it's it's important to get to a little bit. He's um, saying, I think we have to keep in mind that many customers of Western brands maybe want to feel that they are in the West instead and Latinized forms give them what that what they want. Uh, I think we have to get the number I would love to hear your opinion before I say mine. Um, so, so, Hrant, you mean that like people in the Arab world, but buying Western brands, okay. Yeah, I, I kind of understand that making your brand look like Western, or like it's like a Western thing is a selling point, which is a very typical thing in post-colonial societies. That but, I they, mean, they will celebrate the Western taste, but I don't think this is the case even. No, I mean, I think I think we are a bit confusing Latinized with modern, like Latinized, like I understand that a brand wants to be modern, especially if the, the Latin logo is modern, but Latinized is another completely different concept. Latinization is copying uh, shapes from the Latin without um, um, respecting the other script. And this for me is, is completely a no-no, even if the, whatever the, the customers are saying, I understand that maybe they want something. I'm not saying, I mean, just to be clear, I'm not saying I want super calligraphic uh, uh, logos. This is not what I'm saying. I'm saying the structure, I start with the structure that is really Arabic. So either a very, in a very traditional uh, calligraphic way just to, to have the structure. But then I start to, to like make the, uh, make uh, like uh, adjustments and uh, adjusting contrast, adjusting the size, adjusting the weight, adjusting the features in order to to uh, match it with the Latin. So uh, we we uh, we can I can show you later how we can do this and without uh, being without being Latinized and at the same time without being calligraphic at all, without being traditional. I hope this answers. Uh, not sure. Uh, <clears throat> we can only uh, see the Adobe Premiere again. Oh, no. Not the full screen, yeah, not the presentation no. itself. Yes, no. now it's working, yeah. So a good, I show always bad examples, but a good example that maybe the only good example I found is the Louvre Abu Dhabi. And this is a really good example because it's um, it's an interesting um, thing that it's a museum that, ha that it's a French museum basically that is opening in Abu Dhabi. So how to address that, uh, how to, to make the, the um, Arabic logo <clears throat> a bit like, to, I mean, as you know, high quality as the, the museum, because the museum is very, very, in like, it has a great reputation, it's very, very famous, but it's opening in the Arab world. And uh, I found this a really nice um, solution, although for a Westerner, this is completely, it doesn't match because this is super, uh, it's very calligraphic. This is very like uh, kind of, uh, or traditional in the way of uh, like it's a sans serif also capital uh, it doesn't have the same calligraphic effect of course as the arabic but i think in this case it was like um, i mean i'm so glad that they went for this because it's a very um and I, I hope it's an intentional like uh, uh, you know like uh, that they have thought it through because it's uh, they wanted to preserve actually the the, the, um, that they are going to keep to preserve the, the reputation of the of the museum in, in in the Emirates. So they wanted to go for something much more traditional than here. Usually, you would find something much more uh, modern in terms of uh, the contrast would be 
uh, reduced, for example, it, everything would be flatter on the baseline. And uh, the way they went for this, I think it's really nice. And it it's uh, a bit surprising for me in the sense that how they ac accepted this. Um, the Louvre, the actual Louvre Museum. So I think this is a, a really good example where both scripts are uh, like different from a visual perspective, but they are in harmony and they, they respect the, the brand also. So this is also a very important point to respect the brand. And so here what happens is that after I show this presentation to students, I actually give them advice on uh, how to match make. Um, so I, uh, I, I ask them to actually write functional descriptions and visual descriptions. So what would happen? The functional description is actually, is actually uh, the, the, the feeling of the letter and also uh, and not in a visual way, the feeling and like where they are, what, where you would see these letters usually, for example. So is it traditional structure or unconventional? So usually, for example, a sans serif. Uh, or a serif would be kind of a traditional thing that you would see every day. Is it typographic or handwritten? Is it serious or informal? Is it fancy or neutral? And then the visual descriptions. So the visual descriptions are really purely visual. It's just high or low contrast, uh, upright or italic, wide or narrow letters, uh, like proportions, and serif or no serif. And so from these two columns here, you can the functional descriptions here on your left will actually allow them to choose the right um, Arabic calligraphic style. Um, this is a very, very important point because usually people tend, especially, I mean, yeah, beginners tend to pick the Arabic style based on the visual description. So let's say you have something, I don't know, like uh, low contrast or let's say no high contrast. They would say, ah, yeah, let's do Diwani. Like, no, this is not the way it is. Like the, the visual descriptions, you can actually change them. And you can, as a designer, I can do a high contrast mask. I can do a low contrast Diwani. I can do anything I want just by changing the contrast. This is not the point. The point is that from the function, functional descriptions, um, whether it's something traditional, if it's something traditional, for example, I would pick Nas. If it's something uh, informal, I would pick uh, Roka. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So this is where the the remember the first sheets that I showed you were were different um, where different uh, the different uh, styles are used in different contexts. It's very important. So they would refer to it uh, to to check which style is used in which context. Because usually, if you're not an Arab speaker, you wouldn't. This is a difficult concept concept for you to grab. Like. Um, what is the equivalent of a sans serif in Arabic, you know, just as a, in terms of how often it's used, where do you see it? Because sans serif, you see it uh, everywhere. Nowadays, you see it in books and uh, on the street everywhere. So it's a very common thing. So this, the equivalent of it, I would tell them, okay, so it's very common. It's very um, traditional. You would go to Nasr if it's very, um, I don't know, like a swashy and uh, elegant and scripty, I would say go to Diwana, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, this is, uh, yeah, the, the most difficult uh, part actually for a designer, but also, I mean, for a student, but also even if you are uh, uh, a designer with experience, it's uh, it's difficult sometimes to 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 make this uh, decision. And so, uh, so I would give them logos with uh, with the transliteration, uh, and they would have to write these uh, these descriptions for the functional and the visual and. Uh, ask them what what is the equivalent of these. Uh, what would uh, what would they pick as an Arabic uh, style? Uh, yeah, so so they would draw actually. So I would give them. Uh, so let's say you, they picked a, uh, one of the logos that they picked would be uh, the equivalent of it. Uh, the the right style for it to match would be Nas. They would actually uh, write the name in Arabic of the logo and just with tracing paper uh, go over um, go over the, the each letter and write it in any of the typeface that i gave them so this is just for them to get familiar with how arabic connects uh, with uh, how it's um, uh, how the that it's uh, right to left first of all for them it's uh, quite uh, difficult to grasp um, so this is just for them to see the, the actual word in the style that they chose okay 
And then, uh, yeah, I'll show you actually some work. So um, this is like what, what the functional descriptions would be for this. Um, and uh, here, for example, the student chose, because it's qu quite scripty, uh, they chose Diwani. And so they had, I, I, um, I um, yeah, I refer, uh, they refer to, to this sheet and start to draw, to draw the, the name in, uh, in uh, in this style, and then I tell I show them what contrast uh, uh, is. So I show them that the vertical in Arab in uh, Latin is actually the 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 horizontal in Arabic. So they try to to match the weight. They they actually some of them they realize that in Arabic you need to to make sometimes the Arabic a bit thicker than the Latin because it has much more white space. So also this is an important thing uh, the optical optical um, uh, adjustments to, to make an Arabic. Um, yeah, this is uh, really also very, very difficult for a non-type designer to understand what contrast is. Uh, but uh, at the end, I mean, it's, it's you, once you just insist on it, they, they quite get it. Uh, and so the, the contrast, yeah, the thinnest would be in, in where it would be in Arabic. Uh, and then I asked them to do uh, like a mock-up just uh, to, to show how they would look like. Uh, this is an interesting also one. This is really high contrast, um, like a, um, yeah. And so they, they chose also Diwani. They do something very, very calligraphic. Oops, it's cut, sorry. And so here, um, yeah, also one thing like uh, I try to to not push too hard, but I mean, for example, here it's very, very calligraphic, the Arabic. I try to push the students to make it a bit more typographic, uh, for example, with the uh, clean uh, cuts that are uh, perpendicular to the stroke. But sometimes you realize it, it looks really, really weird in Arabic. So sometimes you should also go back one step and say, okay, this works really weird in Arabic. Let's let's stick with the really traditional uh, thing. And also, yeah, in, in, in some workshops, I also have an additional uh, actually uh, segment where I teach them how to create uh, letters and a type uh, like and actually create a, a typeface with a few letters out of these uh, few uh, letters that they made from the logo. So also this is a very good introduction actually to matchmaking typefaces. Uh, so they, the first step would be to match a logo and then from this logo, you would match, you would actually create the, the typeface out of it. Another example. So here they chose, uh, it's quite like a, an, an informal uh, kind of writing. So they chose Roka as a base. So this is how this is the the first step that I talked about. They would write the 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 name on tracing paper just with really traditional roca without doing any effort, just like back in the days, you know. And this is and then they they uh, from the structure they start to uh, match the features uh, and the uh, the yeah the the contrast. All right. Uh, yeah, here I didn't show. These are just a few cases. H and M, uh, same. They chose also Roka, uh, and the um, uh, yeah, this is quite. Uh, I mean, uh, it's a difficult one because it's uh, it it has inconsistencies. So also, you should uh, like in 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 Latin, and it's like from a brush with different pressures. In in uh, not all the strokes are the same weight, so you have to sometimes also. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, create the, the same inconsistencies in, in, uh, in Arabic. Um, this is a difficult one here. They chose Nask because this was a sans serif, uh, low contrast. So uh, I, uh, they chose Nask because it's, uh, the structure is traditional in Latin. So they chose a traditional structure in, uh, uh, in Arabic. And uh, these are a few of the students' work. I have many on my website also in previous workshops that I've done. This is the last one that I did last month. So I haven't updated yet, updated it yet on the website, but I will soon. And if you want to see more uh, students' work, it's on my website in the education uh, section. Uh, uh, maybe I have four or five workshops. 
Um, this one is the only workshop that I did with digital, like where they actually digitize the logo. I usually don't like, because, but it was a long workshop, but usually I do the workshop over one or two days. And uh, I don't really care about digitizing the logo because this is not really the aim of the workshop. The aim of the workshop is more to understand this, that Arabic has different uh, uh, styles and how to choose the style, uh, first of all, then how to choose, how to um, uh, pick the right size of the Arabic in comparison to Latin, how to do the, how to fix the, the contrast and the features. So it's really four important points, uh, style, size, contrast, and features. This is the most, uh, these are the most important points uh, for matchmaking. Um, so uh, I don't know if anyone has questions. Thank you so much for this uh, presentation. And yeah, uh, I invite everyone to write their questions or even to unmute and, uh, and ask your questions and share your questions with us. I, I have a couple. Uh, yeah. to start with uh, someone like join us um it's it's like it's definitely clear in in the work you do to highlight this um this lack that happened or this clash that happened that there is this clash that happened between the classic calligraphy work and then the move towards the digital time and this clash that happened between calligraphers, uh, graphic designers, type designers that caused um, to have like a space more to the spread of ideas that are not necessarily uh, correct or paying the, 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 the right respect to the Arabic, the heritage of the Arabic script itself. But like now, how do you think this can be in like, countered like how can we fix this now how can we fix how can we undo or dismantle this kind of um treatment to the arabic script mm -hmm. uh the lack of knowledge or the lack of where to go to collect the actual knowledge like yes we definitely we are lucky to have people like you but there is a wide audience of designers, untyped designers coming up and they want to learn, they want to build the, the right relationship with the Arabic script itself. But you are definitely aware of this lack of this, mm -hmm. this, this, it's not easy to come across the information or to do your own research in this field. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, as a designer, you need to, I think, uh, talk about it a lot like this for example is a great example of uh, how we can communicate this among designers especially young young designers who are starting and they will be in the you know like they will be the the, the young uh, generation the next generation of designers in the next three years when they uh, graduate this is very important but also a very very important point is um we need to um it's a lot of work to not just talk about it you need to convince clients actually because even like i have many many um like um, stories about how i try to 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 explain this to a client and they really they are their reference is always what's there and for them if it's there it means it's good uh, so their their reference is everything that's all the bad examples for them are good so this is where it's so difficult for me to 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 tell to because they are not convinced that they they they're like no there's no way that everyone is wrong you know like I mean I'm not saying everyone is wrong but I'm saying that there was a tendency of really making um, very structurally wrong uh, Arabic logos and I mean, I mean it's 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 okay it's it's it, I mean it happened we cannot do anything about the past but I mean it's really important to address that to clients and explain to them why it's wrong and how we can make this better. So uh, for me, this is the most difficult part. And we, we can talk about it, but also maybe write about it, and especially people who have more um, uh, weight in the community write about it, then we, I think we will, uh, it, it will advance much better if someone who's like really uh, famous in the uh, type design community, if they write about this, people would be more uh, convinced, I think. Um, yeah, I think it's about, like, it's 
definitely opening the topic itself is going to be helpful and it's something we need because in my experience i definitely stand with the fact that yes designers have a responsibility to educate sometimes like it is your it is part of your job to yeah just just say no like yeah you're a client i need your money and everything but you are pushing me to do a choice that is completely wrong hmm. and i don't necessarily want to stand by this and to try to explain why this is wrong and so on but but in my experience when i said this with with like a, a very big company they were like okay what is like where can we go to find reference yeah exactly this is that's this is that's, the, that's actually the word reference because yeah like i said if if you show them if, if it, they tell you yeah show us a good example and there's nothing you exactly. look really, this you, is look really you look ridiculous yeah. like this is where it starts to be like in my yeah. example they said okay do you have schools in type design like theoretical schools like we have in latin that we can get back to mm. so of course we don't know yeah, yeah. so it, and this is what i'm trying to dig through is is what exactly that we need to do to start establishing this like i don't want it to keep going as something that we are crying over and and we're not necessarily knowing what to like how to start establishing this mm. but we really need like i think for me personally uh, like as like as a designer one of the points that started to feel like yes there is like designers are trying to take stands now is when uh, sarkis made uh, like, published the manifesto mm, and yeah. he said like yeah guys we need to stop cut the bullshit we need to do something about this and but again like this kind of decisions need some sort of work to be sustainable as well like yeah because you need a uh, practical stuff like what why the the, um, the very bad examples are referenced is because they are there and so the only thing we can do is to bring more practical good examples out there in the world to to actually convince people more and this is it's going to take time but this is for me the only way of like um winning if you want if you if i can say that and of, do, uh, yeah. do you think the the lack of the academic study in in the region at least for the for the for the practice specifically of type design mm. has to do with this yeah definitely because we don't have academic references like uh in in latin you can if you are in doubt or you if you don't know about something you either ask someone you know like a or someone in, in type design, like you can find millions of type designers on Twitter, ask them. Uh, there are really famous establishments in type design in Europe and in the States and uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, in the Arab world. It's always either people who have like Arab, uh, like maybe European uh, designers or American designers who have uh, maybe designed an Arabic typeface, but in a Western uh, environment, in a Western establishment of type design, or Arab uh, type designers, but there are very, very few. And most probably you don't know any, if you're, you just started as a graphic designer, you're not really uh, into, first of all, typography. Typography, you know, in the Arab world is even in big uh, universities, the level is not that great. Um, and also it's only lat it's only latin like they only learn latin typography which is sad but in arabic uh, typography i mean i remember i i didn't know uh, when i started reading that there were different arabic, arabic calligraphic styles i had no idea so imagine like uh, we because we we never we were, were never taught this it's something we look at every day but i we have no idea that the the actual um history of it uh, so yeah the lack of of course of uh, any academic reference is uh, is uh, like <laughs> maybe one of the biggest problems but i think change things are changing you know especially now with uh, i mean online resources you can find people online ask them things but still it's not like super easy uh, it's it's definitely not as easy but it's definitely changing it's definitely better yeah. than 10 years ago like yeah you, you at least like and and this is why i got encouraged to 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 like 
ask these questions actually and to open these discussions is alongside the availability of technical knowledge like now if you want to know how to actually technically use this app start building a, a glyph or a letter form you can mm. find this online mm. but what but what's missing is is the cultural part is the theoretical part yeah and this is the part that i think is even more variable valuable and and needs further development mm. and this is the question that like i ask myself and I'm, and I'm trying to find answers to like it's not only to you because it's like an existential crisis thing but like how can we materialize this like between individual efforts of web designers and designers like you doing workshops sometimes even writing articles you also wrote about uh, like anatomy of the letters you you do your share of contributing to this like knowledge body of knowledge but what exactly is the way that we can like in our region do something fundamental in in, in establishing like a, like a shared body of knowledge that is theoretical mm -hmm. that is about how what ha that is historical what happened what happened that was wrong and what needs to change yeah i think maybe um like um something really written uh, in but in just one source would be really ideal so each person with some knowledge they would write an article about something specific put it on one source so that actually everything is really combined in one archive, it would be ideal, an ideal thing. But then if this is not possible, each person, each individual can actually contribute. You can write on your own blog, I can write on my own blog, but you need to share, you need to say, listen guys, I, I know there's a lack of resources online about Arabic typography and type design, and I'm willing to contribute uh, my part. And there are sometimes, I, I mean, I remember back in the days in 2011, uh, I was doing my uh, um, uh, Arabic typeface in Reading. I had no idea. And it was back in the days with FontLab and you had to, to write the, you know, the open type features yourself. It wasn't like just one click now with glyphs. And I remember I, I had no idea how to do it. And then uh, the only article I found was Pascal Zobi's. Uh, yeah, I remember. He had, he had written one. I and like super, from the same one. And yes. like super complicated. <laughs> I, I remember not understanding a single word, but I had to follow it step by step and then it worked you know so these people are who are adding things online this is like really amazing resource but the thing is that it gets outdated uh technology changes so much but but as theoretical stuff these would would stay the same everything that's conceptual would stay the same from exactly. now now on in, in 20, 200 years if you read the article it should still be valid but then everything technological we can you can also do a technological like uh part in your blog saying uh, if you want to share like uh, I don't know like uh, like a, a tricks or t give tips about how uh, uh, to do something uh, uh, like uh, why to create an Arabic typeface I don't know like something just for productivity how to increase your productivity in type design etc in Arabic these are very but it needs so much effort I mean we all have jobs on the side uh, it's something i mean it's an amazing i know it would have it would be yeah, an amazing it, it, thing but yeah um, i don't know i think it needs to come from uh, like an educational institution uh, but this is what i'm trying to like to also think like is it something that needs to come from the from an institution from some sort of institution to be offered to to the scene or to the people who work in this body of knowledge or should it be coming from like i'm, I'm more of a fan of seeing it coming from within the, scene. the community I, I i'm also a fan because when you're within the community you're more on the practical side like you're actually really working it's not really academic it's really practical yeah. but i'm just saying that i think if you think really in a practical way we I can contribute in one thing, you can do one thing, but long term it's not sustainable. It needs yeah, to be definitely. it needs to be like an an actual institution whose work is just to do is just to actually share their knowledge, you know, like uh, like really big uh, big universities. But then I mean 
if you're willing to to we can have talks about this we can meet uh, all the, all the community we can have meetings with the community uh, find solutions maybe people can can uh, can give uh, a better uh, this is i think what tarant is, is suggesting to have like a type thursday as they did in <laughs> armenia now so <laughs> I, I think maybe. we definitely should. Like there is but a lot. Maybe on, online, online because uh, there is a lot to cover, and there is a yeah. lot of, and so, there is a very big political part that is related to this that needs yeah. to be discussed. So okay, someone is saying I have a question. So please, you can like unmute yourself and share your question, please. Uh, hi, um, nice to. Um meet you and actually attend this talk. Um, I just started my master's in Reading. And I think me and Mohammed have had conversations about matchmaking and how painful they are. Um, but you said something interesting. You said some Arabic scripts have serifs and yeah. I don't think I've come across them. So for example, in Tholos and the Alif mm -hmm. uh, has an instru instru um, serif. Uh, yeah, this is what we call, it's called an Arabic tarwis. Okay. Okay. So in in uh, Tholoth, you can have um, a tarwis on the alif on the right side, and okay. on the on the uh, so teeth letter. So the bay, for example, you can have an in stroke on the bay, the the initial bay. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. These are called tarwis. All right. Cool. Thank yeah. you for. And uh, also on, uh, um, yeah, and also on on some of the kufi you would find on the on the baseline of the alif it would have like this oh. that mm -hmm. comes out like a tail that can also i'll mm -hmm. share something with you from the tool uh Khaled Husni developed for for one of his kufi fonts i'm a big fan of this tool i used it uh, recently um i think it's called kahiri uh, I'm just going to answer uh, Jamila Abdelal. Um, she's asking where to start learning basics about Arabic type. Yeah, she's uh, she's saying it's challenging for me to find Arabic resources to start with. Yeah, yeah, like we said, it's it's uh, we need to be writing more things actually. Um, so more practical stuff, right, uh, Jamila? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, just for now, as a like, uh, while waiting for someone to read to write the resources, I think a good example would be to ask uh, designers what are good fonts. Uh, so, and then start to kind of not copy, but like it's good to follow sometimes uh, good uh, good fonts. The the problem is that people usually just they follow it they do follow fonts but usually they follow the wrong ones so it's very important uh like to ask uh, type designers what in your opinion is a good font and ask many designers you don't have to ask just one because it's very then biased but ask many designers and if they have something they give you a name and comment then start following a bit uh, and I think also maintaining a relation, like a good relationship with the calligraphic side of your script is also something that I usually advise. Like mm -hmm. now it's kind of, it's it's very easy now to find a lot of Qurrasat Khattatin. You can find sketchbooks for many of the classic calligraphers yeah. and it can be a very good start to just okay. familiarize yourself with the script, familiarize yeah. yourself with the little forms. Yeah. How they yeah, like yeah, exactly. Like the logos, you know, you you always start from a uh, basic uh, calligraphic structure and then start building your typeface uh, by changing the contrast, changing the weight. You can experiment with, uh, you know, how what is the how do you modernize a calligraphic structure? And this is a very important point, actually, in Arabic, how to modernize a calligraphic structure. Um, it's actually what all type design nowadays is about because everyone wants a modern typeface nowadays. Uh, but modern, yeah, modern doesn't mean that the structure isn't traditional. True, thank you so much. I'm, I'm sharing now in the, in the chat, the, the the link I was I was mentioning it's uh, for uh, Kahiri uh, typeface and for uh, Rana typeface both of them developed by Khaled Husni and they are open source and he made this like uh, web app to illustrate all the alternatives for the for the letter forms 
yeah. And and you can wow. see in the yeah, and you can see oh, like, so cool. the yeah, goofy yeah. with the oh yeah, with the it's uh, like this uh, sword shape. Yeah. I think that's like another part of what I'm like thinking that would definitely help is more open source content in general, mm. like more, more Libra content related to like, not only about the creating free fonts and creating open source fonts, because that's a completely different discussion and not necessarily everyone agrees with, but when it comes to the creation of the knowledge, like the, what we share together to develop further, because mm. And it's and it's like it, it creates this collective learning process it, because, it, like I myself, as I give a workshop, I end up learning stuff. I end up also grabbing like a skill yeah. or two from from the participants. So it's about this openness and sharing the knowledge. Yeah, definitely, and and yeah, these are very important. Actually, uh, I really like this app. Uh, yeah, but the. Um, yeah, you know, the problem is that sometimes because, I mean, I have this problem a lot, like sometimes I want to share something, but it's not perfect. And then I say, oh, I'm, I'm not going to do it. And, but I know that, I mean, yeah, I think it's also these things like sharing it in an informal way. It doesn't have to be to make a big deal out of it. Like, uh, oh, my God, I'm sharing uh, this with ev everyone. So it needs, so it needs to be you know, like uh, I need to work on it for hours, uh, many hours more because, because it's something that I already use, but it's not perfect. But I think many people can maybe, uh, uh, it, it could help many people. But so I don't know, maybe it could be like a kind of an informal community thing uh, uh, where we share things uh, in a forum or I really, I really don't know. It's, um, yeah, I think I think like having a chance to for a discussion like this is is a start. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I hope it ends up formulating and for for all of us to come with more ideas on how we can enrich this this body of knowledge and how can we mm -hmm. share it more and further. Especially that now we, I, I I personally see a lot of upcoming amazing type designers. Yeah, and. It is, it is changing. It's not the same as it was 10 years ago. You only have one or two, or two persons able yeah. to use their faces. So. More are coming and they are definitely in need for more knowledge, so. Yeah, and I think I hope, I, I see also a bit of change in, in universities where they are, in some of them, they're giving some Arabic typography classes. I mean, yeah. much more than 10 years ago. So I think also this would be a really great step forward. Uh, because it's yeah, yeah the most important is the really the new generation the new students uh, learning uh, a bit about their culture and not just be able to typeset in latin you know exactly so anyone else has questions to share with us please unmute yourself and go for it Well, if not, I would love to thank you, Aza, so much for your time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for, for this for initiative. Of course. I mean, I'm really gl glad that we had this talk about how to make things uh, go a bit more forward in our community because it's, like you said, it's a, it is a big problem, but I'm, I'm hopeful. Like, I think we can find, if you want, yes. we can meet uh, uh, another time and find some you know, talk about how to find solutions for this. Yes, because there, there is potential, really. There is a lot of potential and, and there is a lot to talk about in, in, in around this topic. And yes, I will take your generous invitation yeah. and I will be, uh, I'll be knocking on your door again. <laughs> thank you so much for today. And yeah, thank so thanks for today. everyone who came. And thank you for, for everyone questions. for joining today. Yeah and Thank see you. you maybe very soon yes yeah if anyone has questions they can email me or i don't know yeah you can share it with us on the social media if you, if you yeah. wish yeah.
And if anyone missed the part of the discussion, it will be recorded and I'll be uploading it on, on YouTube and mm. Instagram and stuff. So. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Bye. See you. Bye.